Today, I want to talk about composition for concept art and illustration. Uh, we're going to see that there is a part of it that is more on the graphic design side and guiding the eye in the other parts that is about storytelling. Uh, we're going to divide that, but talk about both of them. As I did before in my video on drawing for concept art and both videos on painting for concept art on values and colors, uh, I have two main sources of content that I pulled from. Uh, so for drawing, it was foundation for values, a little bit of foundation and starting looking at books and some tutorials here and there. For colors, definitely schoolism. Uh, and here for composition, I think it's divided a little bit into schoolism as well as learn squared. I think there are great courses on both of them to really teach you about the use of shapes, the use of values, colors, as well as guiding the eye uh, as a whole, as well as the storytelling side, different lighting situations and, and all of that. But before we jump right in, I wanna go back and give you the numbers for the reference material in the description below. There's a lot of ground to be covered here today. Uh, and if you want to take a screenshot and so on, you can refer back to all the, those in the description. One thing I always like to emphasize, different from my first video on drawing for concept art, this is not a sequence to be followed. There is a, a little bit of a logic behind the organization of topics that we're going to be covering but they are not following a number system in terms of order of study, okay? So just wanna put it out there uh, as the, the same happened with my painting for concept art and it's the same uh, here today. So jumping right in, I love this frame and I got it from a promotional material from this drawing workout from me and McKay. This week for the course, I think it's worth the, the whole thing, uh, to be honest. He's telling you how to guide the eye using simple forms. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be a face, sometimes it's gonna be values. And he keeps evolving from a white sheet of paper and jumping to different things. And, and really, you, your eye is following what he's doing and how he's guiding. Uh, he's a great storyboarder in the movie industry, so that's what he does really well. He's a character designer as well, as we saw in the video I did on him here on the channel. But he's also a, a storyteller, and I think it's the first thing in his mind. Even with his characters, he's telling stories. So if he's telling stories with images, he needs to have a great fast read of that image, convey the message, convey the story really quick. So understanding how to guide the eye and what important points will be looked at are, is really part of the mastery of telling a story and uh, storyboarding specifically. So this is really great. So that's why I wanted to start with this prior to going to other topics that look simpler but are not uh, as important. Uh, picture this. Definitely one of the best books to have out there. Simplify composition and storytelling into very basic shapes. You can even use that to teach, uh, teach kids. And, and it's very well thought out uh, and really, really educational. Uh, so definitely check that out. If you want to go deeper, uh, one of the most talked about references in this area is Edgar Payne's book, Composition of Outdoor Painting. This book is not only a great source material for those templates that you can find out there on the internet with simple like shapes for your compositions. So balancing uh, the composition and the elements as well as L composition, circular composition, triangular and so on. Uh, but he also talks a lot about his thought process, about art, as well as making decisions on how to guide the eye. So it's really interesting uh, as a whole, uh, the book, and you can learn way more 
from it than just composition. Uh, it's one of those books that are kind of art spirit or art and fear, more like philosophical in that sense, but are really educational as well. So think of that as, as the overall and not just a, a guide step by step to learning this frameworks. It's more about how to think art and how to frame that. So it's really, really interesting. Uh, if we combine the two ideas uh, here, so simple shapes with simple like overall frameworks for perspective, like rule of thirds and, and all of that, we'll get to some of these tutorials from Foundation Group. You have a lot of uh, content out there on the internet talking about simple shapes, black and white shapes, not tan. Um, also, we'll see later on creative illustration by Andrew Loomis and noir kind of books and the, the overall thought process behind film noir is, is really great to understand how to guide the eye with simple shapes and black and white. Um, a lot of studies, if you look at Nathan Fox courses, he'll start with that or even other uh, people courses they will start with simple black and white or one, two, three reads uh, in terms of values. We talked a little bit about that in the painting for concept art video. So those are great to start out and start understanding simple structure. Uh, I, I love this one specifically by Eitan Zana. I learned a lot from it. Uh, also, uh, I believe this is Kalen Chalk. Also a great resource on that. All links is gonna, are gonna be in the description. So you can start growing from that, going into color and shapes of color and really uh, understanding how to simplify and create this kind of graphic compositions. And we'll get more and more uh, complicated uh, later on. So going back here and I'll go back and forth, but we're talking on the same topics. If we have shapes, frameworks and start like thinking of colors and specifically edges as well. So start getting more complicated. Uh, those two courses, especially Victoria Composition by Nathan Fox is really great. I haven't checked that out, the workout, but probably is great as well. It will go in that direction, getting more and more complex, uh, even abstract in a lot of times, if you look at some of the work put out by Nathan Fox and studied by Nathan Fox in his sketchbooks. A lot of that is simple statement as he puts it, but almost abstract. And you can see even here on this image, it gets closer to abstract, uh, but really guiding the eye and understanding how uh, to do that with color and light uh, and values. So it's really interesting, it gets more complicated. There are lots of videos on the frameworks out there. It, they tend to stay too much in this kind of rule of thirds and tangents and this kind of conversations. But all big art YouTubers have talked about this, like Marco Bucci, uh, Blender Guru has a great video on that. And I don't remember all of them that I brought in here, Tyler Edling uh, over here. So. The list is going to be in the description. You can definitely check that out. This one is uh, specifically uh, really great. Uh, I want to point that out because it goes uh, away from that and more into figures, uh, a little bit of Alphonse Mucha in there and understanding the shapes and composite. So yeah, it, really great. Definitely check that out. And when we get to this one, uh, also a video series by uh, Anthony after curry, the storytelling side will start to get bigger and bigger. I love this series of books from Hans Bacher. So his sketchbooks for composition studies for film, as well as Dream Worlds. I, I only have this one, uh, so I haven't checked those two out, but I would love to. And getting more and more complicated. So simple values, three value structures going into more complex storytelling, storyboarding direction and using color uh, later on. Uh, so it, it's a very interesting series and combines a lot of what we're talking about. If we go back to the basics, 
shapes, graphic shapes, graphic readability with frameworks, elements from nature and all of that. A lot of that we can see uh, in here. We discussed a little bit of this on the video I did on the road to El Dorado. And a lot of those very complex play interplay between nature and man-made structures and how to organize that. There's a little bit of Mondrian in there. Nathan Fox talks about that in the pictorial composition course we just uh, saw. But in this series, Hans Bakker definitely goes deeper into the usability of that for the movie industry. And a lot of the frames are gonna be so fast in your screen that definitely understanding the overall construction and how the eye follows uh, those shapes and colors and so on will go a long way into upping your game. It can be your keyframe illustration game or your even splash art illustration. All of that you can learn a lot from this and study movie uh, screen grabs. I love Evan Richards blog. I'll add that to the description as well. A really great source of screen grabs uh, from some of the best cinematography uh, cinematographers out there. So definitely check those out. Once we get to movies and layout and, and so on, uh, Framed Ink is the biggest reference that a lot of people are gonna talk about. I brought some, some frames from, from the book, some pages from the book so we can take a look. Uh, in the first book, there are some kind of more frameworky uh, directions, um, tangents, as we talked before, the rules of thirds and, and guiding the eye with the perspective, overall shapes and, and, and so on. Uh, and like readability from left to right in, in the Western world uh, and, and, and so on. But he also starts discussing a lot of movies and the understanding of how the composition will give a feeling to a specific scene. So looking down, feeling down, I love this example. So the camera will be slightly looking down. Uh, a lot of people, a circle, circular kind of composition with a person in the middle. So it creates this kind of claustrophobic kind of sensation. Uh, as well as this one, you have a little bit of the circular or at least this part of the circular and the verticals uh, guiding the eye uh, here as well. And the value structures uh, also help focus on the main character uh, here. So it's really interesting to see that. I've been discussing with some people I, I mentor how to study this. It's I've copied this before. Uh, I talked about my mistakes on drawing the figure uh, in other videos, but I also did the same mistakes studying composition, not thinking on how to use that on my own illustration or how to deconstruct a movie scene uh, with that, but focusing too much on copying uh, and, and gaining almost nothing from that. Uh, so here, it's not about copying the organization of those buildings and, and all of that is the feeling of looking up. So if you need an overpowering shot, it could be like a castle uh, and you're getting to the beginning of a, a big uh, uh, area level in a video game or something like that. And you want to give the sense of these overpowering scale, that would be one way to do it. Or movies with a lot of repetition like Akira and, and all of that, you will go and your eye will follow uh, along the way. There is an uh, amazing shot from Love, Death and Robots uh, on this as well, looking down with a lot of buildings and so on. So take your time to deconstruct what they're trying to say with each frame and how can you use that on your work. If we move to Frame Ink 2, uh, I think the book has gone more into theoretical and that's great. Uh, it's giving more examples of how to guide the eye. 
and use that in your favor uh, on illustrations, as we can see here, different like blockings and what that will do to the overall readability of an image, as well as where's the strength overall in your scenes and how the eye is moving throughout the image. I think that's something that a lot of people tend not to do when they're doing their illustrations. So I think Frame Ink 2 is way better in that sense. I've only started going through the content, but it seems to be way better than the first one, more mature in terms of education content uh, from Marcos Mateo Mestre. So definitely it continues to be one of the best and most talked about resources out there. And there's a reason for that. Uh, I also added uh, in here some keyframe studies from uh, John Park, as well as the foundation uh, group, foundation Patreon, um, movie screens and, and guiding the eye. It has a lot to do with everything that we're talking about, as well as comic, creating a comic page uh, by David Finch, which you can find on Proco's uh, website. Going back and in, in more in depth into storyboarding, back to schoolism, to courses in there. I haven't checked those out, but I heard good things about them, as well as keyframe uh, workouts and frame uh, workouts uh, from Pablo Carpio and Helen Chin. Oop. So now, as you can see, and a, a quick recap, we're using shapes, we're using frameworks and directions overall, circular and, and everything that we looked at uh, in Edgar Payne, getting more and more complicated with colors and storytelling aspects. So how to overpower uh, your character and so on. And, and this is where we're gonna start thinking a lot about how to construct your, our illustrations and what story we're trying to tell with that frame or with that illustration uh, overall. So it gets really, it can get really complicated. Uh, so Star Wars uh, Storyboards by Ian McKaig is uh, once again, so a great resource. And uh, creative illustration, we haven't touched on that as much, but it combines everything. It's a great breakdown of all of those elements, values, colors, and so on, and goes really in depth into the storytelling aspects and how to bring it all together to convey what, you're, what you want. Even line construction, uh, circular composition, framework, rule of thirds, everything uh, you can be found into uh, creative illustration. So that's midway for everything that we're talking here to be, today and definitely uh, one of the best resources out there on composition and the use of composition in illustration. If we go uh, this side, it gets more into movies. So we're going a little away from illustration and more into the cinematic aspects. Uh, I love the work from uh, Alexander Mondrayev. So we can see some of his work in here. So this is a keyframe illustration he did for Loki. His work is great. And you can see a lot of the abstraction uh, that we talked about before. So the colors, the use of like verticals and horizontals, we talked about Mondrian a bit. I even brought uh, an image from uh, Mondrian but more on his previous work uh, before going very abstract with verticals and horizontals. You can see a lot of, of those beginnings in here uh, with verticals and horizontals and the concentration of some values and colors in, in different places. So a lot of exploration of darker values, uh, stronger colors, as well as saturation. And you can see the same uh, to some extent being done here. So the use of colors, saturation in different places, intensity of values, verticals versus horizontals, 
and how all of that combines to the overall readability of the scene. Of course, we have a face here. We tend to go to the face, as we saw in the framework from Ian McKaig in the beginning of the video. Uh, faces, eyes, human features will tend to grab uh, our attention. But in a very noisy situation like this, you need all the frameworks and tools to really uh, convey uh, the message as well as convey the feeling, the emotion, uh, and so on. So definitely uh, Alexander Mandraev is one of the best resources out there on this. A lot of the courses from Learn Squared, so visual storytelling, 2D and 3D se sequence uh, illustration, especially cinematic concept design, narrative concept art, all of them are gonna focus on everything that we're talking about uh, in here and using all those frameworks and everything, those tools that we talked about to really build on top of that. Uh, and it, uh, as before, it gets more and more complex. So go one step at a time, start with the graphic and keep building on top of that. That's why you do the black and white study. So you can have simplicity, you can understand really one, two, three reads and where are you guiding the eye with simple stuff before you get all the colors from like Spider-Verse kind of environments where there is a lot of noise and you really need to understand how to guide the eye in there. I love this book, Visual Story by Bruce Block, uh, dives deeper into the use of lines, colors and so on and even camera, different cameras uh, and all of that. It's very focused on uh, cinematogra cinematography. You can be misguided by the cover. Uh, it's weird cover for this book, but the content is really amazing. So definitely check that out. There are two courses on using light uh, for story, uh, just a, a little bit as we saw here with narrative for concept art from uh, JAMA uh, on schoolism uh, and story-driven illustration. So everything is kind of connecting. I love this YouTube channel as well. Uh, Every frame of painting. Talk, uh, Nerd Writer uh, also talks a lot about that. I'll, I'll add both to the description, but I think this one was one of the best YouTube channels we ever had. And unfortunately is no longer uh, publishing videos, but there is uh, a great database in there to be checked out. And last but not least, cinematic interiors, going more with that route and using different tools. So going 3D and all of that, as well as uh, CGI filmmaking. I'm putting together a video more on those processes and, and advanced kind of mentality. Uh, and I'll definitely add a lot of that uh, later on. But just a quick uh, recap of everything that we've seen uh, right here today. The biggest thing on composition is learning to guide the eye and tell the story that you want to tell. It can be with simple things. It can get more and more complex. It can be simple topics. So trees and a hill and how to organize that and how to make changes to nature to emphasize some things that you're saying. That's what composition for outdoor painting will be the greatest resource. Getting simple things into looking beautiful uh, and, and really conveying a sense of calmness or just having something beautiful for the eye. Uh, you can start getting more and more complex with uh, these more shape-driven environments. Uh, and, and go all the way to the even more complex. Then you start combining that with colors and really guiding the eye using a lot of those frameworks we talked about and then telling stories. And that will get even more and more complex. There are lots of frameworks to be looked at and a lot of things to learn uh, and putting that all together in production environments. So yeah, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something here and I definitely hope you learn way more from the content uh, that I'm uh, putting out here. Just once again, if you wanna take a look at the numbers, here are the numbers for the reference material in the description below. 
If you enjoyed any of them, please share your experiences. Uh, please share what you enjoyed about them, how you learned from them so that other people can start from that and, and really gain uh, on top of that. And the community can share a lot of learnings and what works and what didn't work as well. So uh, I'll be looking forward to looking at those comments and uh, I hope you have a great learning journey in composition. See you all in another video.